Australians have installed 100,000 battery systems since 2023. As a result, renewable energy has reached record levels here in the country, which is a remarkable result. I fully commend you if you've installed a solar system and a backup battery. You are part of the solution. But I do want to warn you of this because this is a big problem. I believe a lot of those 100,000 batteries will fail prematurely for one key reason that I've been hearing about, reading about on forums. And I just want to warn you, it's very important you know this information because it's not. this is not an issue people are talking about. They're talking about battery fires. They're talking about how many charge cycles can you get. They're talking about how much money can I save? What's the absolute cheapest price I can pay? But that may cost you very, very dearly. So I'm going to get this battery right so I can save up some of this well, a lot of this solar energy that I'm simply wasting because I'm not using all the solar power during the day, even charging my EV. It's just too much solar. The idea is to use that power at night time. Go to get this battery and I find out something that you should know. Now, there is a huge number of Australians installing batteries at their houses and I think a lot of them have made a very big crucial mistake, a crucial error. And I think when they read this, what I'm about to share with you, they're going to go, oh, shit. Ah... Uh, uh, and maybe get that sick feeling, you know, when you realize you've made a, a huge, like when you go and install a battery, right, at your house, it might cost you 20,000, 15,000, potentially 16,000 for Tesla Power. Well, if you get one, you get two of them, it might cost you 25,000. You know, you might spend a $30,000 and you might think to yourself, well, I got a really good deal. I saved $1,000 or I saved $2,000 versus someone else. But did you really, did you really? You might not have. In fact, you might have lost yourself a crazy amount of money. I'm going to explain why. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Great to have you with us. I might as well make this video a live video because I'm just speaking off the cuff here. So here's one of the things. There's been huge numbers of battery recalls here in Australia. You want to make sure you get a battery you know is going to last. Now, someone just sent me a message saying, should I buy this new battery from this new company? I said, hell no. <laughs> Come on. You're going to buy a new battery from a new company? Really? You know what these new companies are doing? These new solar companies, new battery companies, they're selling at a loss to get market share. What happens to them? What happens to half of them or more? They go bankrupt, right? They're very risky if you go buy a battery, a battery or a solar system from a brand new company, particularly batteries though, because honestly, a lot of batteries are not rated for what they should be. And a lot of companies don't even mention this stuff, right? Let's say, think about it this way. Most of the batteries being sold here in Australia are not rated for Australia. Right. If most of us live near the beach, how is it most batteries aren't rated to be installed near the beach? I'm just sort of find this shocking that this information isn't readily available. Solar Quotes, great website. A lot of people on there um, either are geniuses or they think they're geniuses and post a lot of good information. Some of it is great. Some of it not so great. Some of it's from people trying to sell their own products. But this is why I chose an Anchor battery. For one, it's an LFP battery pack, right? Lithium ion phosphate. LG, one of the biggest battery companies in the world, or they used to be until their batteries were recalled many, 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 many thousands of times. They've had lots of fires here in Australia. LG batteries. As you know, LG don't use lithium ion phosphate batteries. They will in the future, but they don't yet. And so there have been huge number. I think there was 14,000 batteries recalled in Australia, LG batteries. Yeah, like I said, not lithium ion phosphate. And lithium ion phosphate is the safer battery chemistry for home batteries. Plus, it's going to probably get you more cycles. Your cycle life is probably on average going to be a bit longer. So you want to really avoid getting a battery that could set fire to itself or more likely than setting fire to itself, is having water go inside the battery. I personally have learned this lesson the hard way on a number of occasions. I've owned electric bikes, electric skateboards, uh, electric um, scooters. I'm telling you now, I could just, I could line this room up with a bunch of junk that was electric products where water got into the battery and killed it, killed it. That's end. That's the end of it, right? I'm talking about new products as well, things that were just like I'm. I'm thinking, okay, I bought this new X-Way, EX 
XWAY, XWAY, one of the biggest brand names in the world, XWAY scooter. Two out of the three I bought. I, dro- I rode them through a puddle, busted, battery dead, all right? The same thing can happen to your home battery. Anchor, they make a battery that is made for Australian conditions. The Anchor Solix X1 is, you know, made for Australian coastal conditions. And the question here is, if companies are going to say to you, um, well, technically our battery isn't rated for the coast, how far back from the coast do you need to be to make sure your battery is not going to get any water in it and get it destroyed? How far back? I mean, what's the number? They give you a number, but my question is this. You know, the wind blows pretty damn hard on the coast here. Living on the coast here, everything around my house is getting rusted. <laughs> I can even see some rusted bolts on it's rusted cars. Everything rusts, right? The wind pushes that salt everywhere. So my question is, if you're 150 meters away from the ocean, are you going to be okay? What about 300 meters? What about 500 meters? Well, here's what Anchor says, and this is why I'm getting an Anchor battery. The anti-corrosion performance of the vast majority of energy storage system fuselages on the market currently only reaches C4, which means that you cannot install the energy storage machine outdoors within 500 meters of the coastline. Anchor's Solix X1, which is the battery I'm going with, has achieved a C5M anti-corrosion rating meaning you can install it wherever you want. But if the majority of batteries being installed in Australia can't be installed within 500 metres of the coastline, what about if you live 600 metres away? What about if you live 700 metres away, but you get a lot of onshore wind, right? If you're a surfer, you know what I'm talking about, onshore wind. What about you get onshore winds just blowing half the year or maybe maybe even majority of the year, which a lot of locations get a lot of onshore wind, then is that 500 meters really going to be 500 meters or should it now be a kilometer? Now, if you eliminated a kilometer away from the coast for all of Australia, we're talking millions of households. That's a lot of people who might have batteries that might get wet at some point within the next 15 years. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, oh yeah, I've had my battery for five years. Stuff you, Electric Viking. I'm all fine. I'm all good, mate. Just because my system's not rated at the right rating, I'm still good. Mm, I'd be curious to hear back from you in 10 years' time. When you've had the battery for 10 years, you don't want this product to, to die, right? And I think it's something you need to consider. People need to consider this when they're installing a battery because no one's talking about this, but they should be because this is the biggest issue for electric products of any kind. Batteries dying from water, water ingress. This is the most common way batteries actually, it's actually not from crashes. It's not from um, other defaults. It's actually from water ingress getting into batteries. So Anchor says their system has undergone undergone a 1,000-hour neutral salt spray test, easily eclipsing the industry standard of 480 hours. Now, I don't know if this is absolutely true, but it certainly is a lot more comforting to, for me personally to know the company is making a focus of this issue when this is so important here in Australia. This superior resistance is achieved through the use of high-quality galvanized steel, galvanized nickel fasteners, and a specialized powder coating process, which together ensure the product's resilience in extreme conditions at anchor. Launched in Australia late last year, the modular AC couple Anchor Solix X1 system offers 3 kilowatt and up to 36 kilowatt power output and 5 kilowatt hours to 180 kilowatt hours energy capacity. The power modules are to be paired, can be paired with the 5 kilowatt hour LFP battery modules that can be stacked to six for a total storage of 30 kilowatt hours. The maximum charge or discharge power is three kilowatt and the maximum charge or discharge current is 7.6 amp hours. Now, you can actually connect a 12 kilowatt hybrid inverter to solar panels for 24 kilowatt of DC input, the company have said. So when sunlight is abundant, 12 kilowatt powers home appliances while the surplus 12 kilowatt charges the battery. For me, this is gonna be perfect scenario, perfect situation where I can actually never pay for electricity ever again. I've looked at my bills and I mean, I might have to pay for electricity one day of the year, potentially. I'll tell you guys a bit more about the battery system when it gets installed. That's happening next week. I'll do a video about that, show you a bit more about the batteries, give you a bit more information on why I've selected them. But I just wanted to put this out there because people have been asking me, you know, what batteries should I buy? I've received several emails. And it's one crucial issue that I reckon 99% of people who buy a battery here in Australia never think about. 
or when they buy a solar system, they don't think about it either. Corrosion resistance. In Australia, we live near this, we near live, nearly everyone lives near the ocean. Corrosion resistance is extremely important. Nobody's talking about it. They really should be because corrosion destroys everything. I mean, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Could that time be 30 years for my battery and five years for one of the alternatives? It's possible. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section and I'll see you on the next video.